This is educative video of microsurgical management of joint intracranial internal carotid artery aneurysm. This 18 years adult male presented with progressive loss of vision left eye, inability to see on the left eye completely of one month duration, progressive weakness of right side limbs and difficulty in speaking for about a month. Examination showed glossocoma score 15. He had right hemiparesis and complete loss of vision in the left eye and primary optic atrophy of the left fundus. He was investigated to the CT scan brain plane outside and contrast which showed a large supracellular mass enhancing with contrast suggestive of a giant intracranial aneurysm with the size of 3.5 centimeters by 3.5 centimeters as shown here. Subsequently, he was investigated by us with 128 slice 3D CT angiography, showed a giant aneurysm in the supracellular region on the left side, originating from the left internal carotid artery, supraclinoid part, and the aneurysm was directed medially and posteriorly and superiorly as shown here and the the distal part of the aneurysm had the origins of anterior cerebratory and middle cerebratory anterior choroidal and posterior choroidal arteries as shown here these are the various 3d reconstruction images of the aneurysm and location, size, shape of aneurysm and relation of the aneurysm to the skull base and the branches of anterior circulation of willis originating from the aneurysm side. Subsequently, we investigated him. All four vessel digital subtraction and geography which showed again a giant aneurysm originating from the left ICA. Now we have to study two important uh, issues here. One, the cross circulation from right to left. Number two, balloon occlusion test, the tolerance of the balloon occlusion. First, we did a cross circulation study after occluding the left common carotid artery, showed an excellent strong circulation from right to left. Then we did a balloon occlusion test on the left common carotid artery and and see the tolerance for 15 minutes in a graded way he tolerated it very well the time of balloon occlusion was increased so there is no hemiparesis or speech abnormality these are the pictorial demonstrations of unreasonable anatomy ap and lateral view he was taken up for surgery underwent left frontotemporal large craniotomy Yes, superficial temporal artery to middle cerebral artery M2 bypass and a trap ligation of internal carotid artery in the neck and supraclinoid internal carotid artery intracranially proximal to the origin of posterior communicating artery. These are the steps of exposure of a common carotid artery and internal carotid artery and keeping it ready for the obliteration at a later stage. First step is that we expose the common carotid artery and internal carotid artery and keep it ready. Next step is to harvest superficial temporal artery graft and keep it ready as shown here anterior to the tragus and artery is harvested well. We take off quite a length of superficial temporal artery so that we should not fall short when it comes to the anastomosis because we are not very sure the branches of middle cerebral artery. Now you see almost up to one and a half inches above the pinna which is exposed. The anterior branch was quite big here that was exposed quite well. It was clamped and taken out and harvested. At this step Every time we keep on washing it with the warm saline and only the wall of the artery is, is caught, uh, is, is, is held, not the whole artery to prevent intraluminal hematoma. 
once you take the graft, it is protected with warm pepper and saline. The surface vessels we found were very small, M2 branches, and among them, the biggest branch was selected and the, the, it was exposed and under high illumination and high magnification, the arterial tummy was made and the superficial temporal artery was brought and repeatedly washed with heparinized saline. Patency is checked with 10O ethylon. The bypass is made with the fish mouth from the superficial temporal to the M2 branch. M2 branch appears to be very small and, and the, the, the putting of the graft was a little difficult but took some time to cut short just uh, its routine procedure. So I have, we have not gone into details of it. The graft is placed and now once the graft is placed, you can see the hyperemia of the temporal lobe there and the patency, we can check it up with intraoperative ICG. Now you see that the, the ends of the grafts of the sutures are cut. This is the pictorial demonstration of the anatomy at this juncture. Now, next important step is to open the sylvian fissure from lateral to medial. And always it is preferable and better to open the fissure wide and deep, which is very important to expose the bifurcation, try to expose the bifurcation of ICA and demonstrate both MCA, ICA and ACA. Now you see the medial end is reached and the medial part, the carotid optic system is also opened. Now we can see the aneurysm there, quite a big aneurysm and inseparably fused with the basal frontal lobe as you see there. The brain is tight and tense and arachnoid is opened and the aneurysm is exposed. Arachnoid opening really helps to dissect the aneurysm better. Now at this juncture, we try to coagulate the surface of the aneurysm and try to reduce the size. Again, the coagulation should be very careful because medially and laterally, there may be the perforators from the ICA and ACA, that's anti-sublatory, coursing on the surface of the aneurysm dome superiorly. And if we keep coagulating, we may coagulate the perforators leading to significant ischemic neurological deficits post-operatively. Now you see we have reached the medial end of the sylvian fissure and the, we are cutting the medial end, but still the brain appears to be tight. Now we go deeper part of the sylvian fissure and arachnoidal adhesions are cut and the sylvian fissure is opened again little more wider and, and deeper and expose the middle cerebral vessels and perforators without damaging or disturbing them. That is the deeper part of the sylvian fissure and now we are the medial part of the sylvian fissure now. Now we can see the carotid artery, internal carotid artery on the surface of the dome of the aneurysm medially, but rest of the branches are not seen. Now that is the lateral part of the sylvian fissure. Again, it, this helps again opening this fissure wide, helps in reducing the retraction of the frontal and temporal lobes, which is of great importance here because already the brain is little tight and swollen because of the giant aneurysm, maybe ischemia produced by the aneurysm with multiple thrombi. Now at this stage, we decide to put a clip on the internal carotid artery in the neck already, which is bit exposed and kept. So the completeness of the clipping of internal carotid artery in the neck is confirmed. Then we move to the cranial end. Now, once the clip is put on the internal carotid artery in the neck, the size of the aneurysm, the, the, the blood supply, the blood flow stops completely and the aneurysm becomes smaller in size. 
but still it is getting blood supply from the opposite side through anterior communicating artery, anterior subtal artery going into that. Now you see, now we can we can well demonstrate the distal ICA, that's internal carotid artery, and you can see the aneurysm is the aneurysmal dilatation of the ICA itself in the joint form. Now we can see the distal ICA, internal carotid artery, and open the origin of posterior communicating artery and anterior choroidal artery from the distal ICA. Now we have to create a space between the dome of the aneurysm and the distal internal carotid artery to apply the clip. Now you can see the posterior communicating artery there proximally and distally anterior choroidal artery and bifurcation of internal cerebral artery medially and laterally into A1, ACA and MCA M1. This is a distal anatomy so nicely demonstrated and perforators originating from MCA and ICA are not disturbed at all under any circumstances. Now the space is created to apply the clip on the ICA, distal ICA and the clip should be proximal or before the origin of the posterior communicating artery because posterior communicating artery may be supplying distally on that side, number one. Number two, if we don't include proximal, uh, put a clip proximal to the posterior communicating artery, the aneurysm may be keep getting blood supply through the posterior communicating artery from posterior circulation, vertebral basilar circulation and aneurysm may keep growing. So the important step is to put a clip proximal to the origin of posterior communicating artery. Space is very narrow and tedious here and one has to be very careful in applying the clip proximal to the posterior communicating artery. Here the clip is applied posterior to the, the proximal to the posterior communicating artery and now we can see the anterior choroidal and posterior communicating artery very well. Now you can see the size is reduced. Every stage we keep washing the, the area with papaverine saline to prevent vasospasm. Now you can see the anatomy there, the anterior cerebral artery A1 and middle cerebral artery M1 that is interlocuted artery bifurcation is exposed and confirmed and it is well preserved. Now you can see the middle cerebral artery and the branches. The surface of the brain is, is hyperemic. Now this is the anatomy pictorial disc, uh, demonstration at this juncture. Now we do interoperative ICG at this juncture to see the status of aneurysm as well as the circulation which is very important. Now you see the interlocuted artery is filling up distal part A1 and M1 are filling up and middle cerebral artery is filling up very well suggest you of a good circulation and, and, and the distal circulation M3, M4, M5 are filling very well. Aneurysm is not filling and the anterior cerebral artery is filling well. That is basal frontal and medial frontal parasagittal branches of anterior cerebral artery are seen filling, suggest you of a good circulation at this juncture as shown here. So this is the comprehensive operation. Same day evening, we get a CT scan brain done and after doing a decompressive elective craniectomy, you can see the aneurysm size has come down, brain is swollen and edematous. We ventilate the patient for about 40 day, 48 hours. He is, he is tolerating the ventilator well and he is sedated, moving the left side limbs spontaneously right side in spite of the good cross circulation and the uh, 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 STAMCA anastomosis probably he has uh, 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 ischemia and he is not moving the right side. So in the acute phase we did expect this and BP was kept quite high about 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury. Over a week with good physiotherapy he made a rapid improvement 
Now on the day seven, just before the day of discharge, he is walking with support and he is communicating and his hemiparesis has improved to grade three, three plus, and he is walking backwards and speech is well preserved. He is communicating with the family and is communicating with us. On day seven, we got a repeat 128 slash 3D CT angiography and brain looks normal. Aneurysm is completely taken out of the circulation and the left ACA, MCA are well preserved and filling very well from the right side and maybe the, the bypass. Unfortunately, the superficial temporal artery is not seen here. Probably it got thrombosed. That is a very unfortunate situation. But the aneurysm is taken off completely and from the circulation and anterior cerebral and middle cerebral circulations are perfectly normal. This is the final picture of the surgery and anatomy at the end. That is our neuroanesthesia team. Our presence online with more than 440 microsurgical endoscopic navigation guided educative neurosurgical operative procedural videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for viewing.